I want to open up Psalm 133, verse 1. Psalm 133, verse 1. It says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. And I just, I just want to say that this is how true this is, that it's a joy and it's a pleasure for all of us to be here together. All of the services combined, the morning service, the afternoon service, the evening service, and people from the youth service all here together in unity. I just, I want to thank God. And I, again, it's, it's a pleasure and good and pleasant how we can all dwell here together in unity, whether you're here present or watching online. And soon we're going to watch one more video right after this greeting message about you know, people that serve at the afternoon service, also talking about Bright Church and the impact it's been having on their lives. And as you may have heard already, that God has given this church 90 years. We are celebrating the 90 year anniversary and I just, I want to, I want to make sure that we don't get this wrong. We're not celebrating ourselves. We're not celebrating ourselves right now. We're not celebrating some group of people. We're celebrating God. Amen? And all the glory goes to God because God is the one that gave us 90 years. So can we just say this together? Glory to God. Glory to God. Because he is the only one that has given us the 90 years. It is his grace and it is his great goodness. And all this being said, I just want to say that on, on behalf of all of the youth here, on behalf of everybody who's serving in the youth ministry, I just want to say that we want to join in the celebration of God's work here in Bright Church. And we are thankful as the youth, to be a part of this church, to be a part of this local body that God has placed here in West Sacramento. And we are thankful for all the many and abundant opportunities that God has given us here in this church. I was literally born into this church. I did not choose this church. Uh, kind of like Pastor Paul said, he had no choice. And I didn't have a choice either. I was born into this church, and I'm thankful for that. And I've seen some highs and I've seen some lows. But more importantly, I have seen God at work. I've seen God at work here. And there is nothing that brings me and I'm sure you more joy to our souls than to see God at work. Amen? Through imperfect people like us. Through imperfect people like you. Through imperfect people like me. To see sinners saved for the glory of God. And we see this Sunday again, and Sunday over Sunday, oh, people coming out, people praying, people's lives changing. And I, before I close, I just want to share a prayer request that I made to God recently, maybe, maybe a month ago. I, remember, I caught myself praying, and I asked God, I said, God, I don't want to just see people go from being Good Christians to better Christians, right? I mean, that's a good thing, and I want to see that. But that's not all I want to see. God, I don't want to just see people from, you know, walking in the faith to maybe walking faster or maybe even running in the faith. I want to see that, but that's not all I want to see, God. I don't want to just see people go from being good to better. God, I want to see people go from being spiritually dead to being spiritually alive to you. I want to see people who don't care about you turn into people who love you and they're obsessed about you. God, I want to see people who are not on fire for you become on fire for you. I want to see people who are living for themselves and for their selfish desires to living for you and wanting to give their life up for you. God, that's what I want to see. I want to see that. Lord, let me see your power. And it's interesting because as I prayed this, God removed the scales from my eyes, just like he removed the scales from the eyes of Apostle Paul shortly after he had saved him. He said, do you want to see my power? Do you want to see me working? Then look. Look, Peter. 
And, and just in a matter of two weeks, I could share this with joy. Just God started showing me his work in the lives of all the people around us here. And I'll give, I'll give you one example. I, there was a time where we had a brother sharing a testimony up, up front, and I was standing in the foyer. And I'm standing, I'm looking at the TV screen in the foyer, and I'm listening to this testimony of how his life had changed. And there was another brother coming out from the restroom, and he was walking towards me, and he was listening to the testimony, but he didn't see who was talking on the TV screen. And he's listening to the testimony, and as he comes up to me and greets me, he looks up at that TV screen, and as he looks at the TV screen, he recognizes the person who's giving his testimony, and he's just blown away. He Literally, his jaw drops. He looks at the TV. He looks at me. He looks back at the TV, and he looks at me again because he recognized that man, and he realized who that man was and how much he has changed, and he could not even believe the change that had happened in his life. Because that man was so far gone that he was beyond hopeless, and yet God, not we, not we, not Bright Church, but God had done that work in his life. And when I seen his reaction, I understood that this is the power of God. This is the pure power of God. This is not just some kind of, you know, program or good advice that we gave people. This is the power of God that changes the deepest and darkest parts of our heart. And I worshiped God for that. There's another example. As I, as I prayed for God to open my eyes, he showed me more people. There's people that I've been praying for. There's people that I've been praying for on a weekly basis. There's people that I talk to. There's people that I explained everything about the Bible. I, they asked me questions. I gave them answers. I showed them where it was in the Bible. They understood everything clearly. They could recite it back to me perfectly. They understood everything in here, and yet in their lives, they did not worship Jesus. They did not live for Jesus. And in my heart, I thought, God, what, what else is there to do? There's nothing because they know everything. They have all the answers. What else can I do? Can, maybe I follow them around and tell them to be a better Christian, but that's not going to do anything. They're still dead in their sins. And shortly after I prayed, God had opened my eyes again, and I had heard and realized that some of those people that I was praying for, they too were saved, and now they're on fire for Jesus. They're living for God. And and. and even a greater joy is I found out that some of these people, they were born again. They were saved through some of the events that we had put together as a youth. And it's so humbling because as we started to plan these events, do you know what we did? The very first thing we did before we started planning these events, we all got on our knees together here in this room, in room 103. And we said, team, Let's pray that God would save people through this event. And we prayed specifically for that. And then four months later, God shows me. He says, you prayed about that. And I have answered this prayer. This man has been saved from hell. He has been saved from living for himself. And he is now with me. And he now knows me. And that is a joy. And that is a pleasure. He saved people right then and right there. And God has opened my eyes and I worship him. And it's just through this, God was telling me, Peter, I am working. I'm working. And my power is just as powerful today and here as it has been ever since I have started the church 2,000 years ago. Amen? And, it's, and, and it is a joy for me. It is joy for all of us. And, and we are humbled to be here to witness the power of God working in this world for His glory and for our joy. And in closing, before we go on to watch the next video, I, I want to I close with a passage from Ephesians which I feel very accurately describes what we are going through here now at this time. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21, Paul says, Now to him, that's God, who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work 
within us. To him be glory in the church, in bright church, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, not just for 90 years, not just for 100 years, but throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.